Today's video is going to take a look at answering exam questions for the unit one exam paper on human growth and development, particularly 10 mark questions, which I think is an area that a lot of students tend to struggle with in terms of picking up marks. Now, the first thing to remember about these 10 markers is they are really important questions. During the course of your exam paper, you will come across 10 of them, which means that 50 marks out of the 90 is going to come from a 10 mark response. So this is a really important part of the paper and a really important question to try and get used to using, practice them in order to maximise the marks you can receive. My main tips for approaching a 10 mark are the things that I think you should be trying to make sure you do with every 10 mark question is first of all, read the question, read the item, be really clear that in the sense you know what you're being asked to write about. Take a minute and plan what you want to say. Obviously think about which theory is relevant. What is the question asking? What am I being asked to talk about? What do I need to say? So really take a minute to think about what you're doing. You're going to be spending about 10 minutes on this question. One minute, or just a bit of planning time is going to help a lot when you come to write. Refer back and link all your points to the context, the case study and the characters. Try and make sure you're referring to that person thinking about that person and putting yourself in their shoes. Use a theory or a study to demonstrate what you're talking about. Try and make sure every 10 marker has a relevant theory of some kind connected to it. Um, I'm going to come back to that point because I think it's a really important one. Be specific about your answer. So make it clear what is the effect, the impact, the reason, the consequence of an action. Try and give specific health issues. Rather than just saying it's unhealthy, try and give a really specific health impact. So it will increase blood pressure, risk of a heart attack, diabetes. So try and be clear what the consequences and use what, what medical language you can. Evaluate your answers. That is important depending on the type of question, but most questions you can try to balance the response in order to kind of add two sides of the argument and provide a clear conclusion. As I said, theory or studies are really important. And the reason I say this is because it, it helps to boost your grades of any answer by making sure you've put a relevant theory in and developed it. There aren't that many theories across the exam unit course. So looking at this list here, Chomsky, Balby, Piaget for growth and development or PIES. In section B, you've got Gessel, Bandura, the stress diaphysis model, Holmes Ray scale, and then in aging, you've got Haverhurst and Henry and Cummins. There are not many thinkers and depending on the type of issue that you're being asked to talk about, the likelihood is you're probably gonna use one of these people to demonstrate or a relink to what you're talking about. So as I said at the beginning, there are lots of different wordings to these questions. And again, this is really important, what the wording is asking you to talk about. So if you have a discuss question, you're being asked to talk about the issues in detail and their importance and their relevance. So you're gonna write about a topic, you're gonna to talk about what's going on, you're gonna try and explain the processes taking place. But again, within that, you might put the other side of an argument or two sides of an argument and evaluate it. Evaluation is where you're making the discussion points. You're talking about the different sides, but you're making a judgment. Is it good, bad, successful? Justify generally means you're trying to support a point. You're trying to outline all the arguments that agree with the wording of the question. But again, it's really important to bring in theories to support this. You may want to balance out the other sides and try and have a, a two-sided debate, but you're gonna put more emphasis on agreeing with the question. To what extent, very similar. Again, you're gonna talk about what agrees with the question and supports the judgment, but also maybe the other side and thinking about how that judgment or that view is questionable. So let's take a look at an actual exam question. So this is a question from the June 2019 paper about the Khan family, and particularly I want to focus on this question here, this 10 marker about Amir who's lost his job, decided to go back to college to retrain as an electrician. Now the question is evaluate the impact of unpredictable life events on individuals' development. 
the key word we have here is evaluate. So as I said before, we want to put two sides of an argument. So one of the things to consider is, is what are we going to talk about? Let's say we're going to take a minute to just think about what we might want to include. And, and in a real exam, if you write some notes in your booklet, you can just put a line underneath them, cross out the planning and then get started with your answer. So what are the life events, the, the life events that are in the question? So those life events are things that happen during a lifetime that can have positive or negative consequences for individuals. Predictable life events are ones that we are likely to experience. So this might be starting school, uh, getting a job. So these are things that are most likely to happen to most people during a lifetime. We can plan for them, prepare for them. We know in some cases they are going to happen to us. So starting school, you know you're going to start school. An unpredictable life event is something that you, you can't prepare for. You don't know what's going to happen. You maybe don't even know it's going to happen to you. This could be stuff like uh, an illness or redundancy. And often these are generally seen as negative impacts on individuals. So what is the impact of unpredictable life events on individuals development? So in this case, we've got Amir who's lost his job physically. This situation, you're going to lose your income. That might mean you get a poor diet. It could cause stress, the physical impact of stress on the human body. So high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, strokes. Intellectually, you might be able to um, lose your you lose your activity. So you've lost your job role, which is obviously a key source of intellectual development and challenge. You may have lost your ability to engage in activities because of the income reduction. Emotionally, self-esteem will reduce. Your self-concept will go with that. You may see yourself as a failure because you've lost your job. And you may have less ability to support your family. Um, Aussie, on this other side, we can maybe think about attachments or maybe a bit of Balby for emotional development. So the fact that you still have your family, you have your attachments to your family might help you cope while on this course. We also have depression and anxiety, which could also be caused by this redundancy. And as socially, loss of previous contacts with friends, loss of income, unable to do activities, isolation. And he also may feel isolated while at college because he's older than the other students. Positive, though, the impacts of it can be that, you know, it might reduce the risks linked to stress. The new role will keep him physically active. Returning to work will improve his income. Uh, intellectually taking on this new role, the skills will help him develop uh, his cognitive abilities, uh, learning to become an electrician, the CPD that he'll undertake as part of that. Self-esteem could go up, proud to return to college, sense of achievement, He's, you know, this career change has been beneficial to him. Socially, building new contacts, new friendships while at college, once he's entered his new job. Theory wise, the key theory for unpredictable life events would be the Holmes race scale, the, the stress tests. You know, the idea that they, they had a list of 43 life events and scored them on the level of stress that they cause. And then therefore using that to determine the impact on health. Some of those effects of stress, some of those medical conditions, headaches, migraines, anxiety, heart conditions. So some of that medical terminology we could use. And as another theory, as we said, Balby could be thrown in quite easily. So let's take a look at this 10 mark question. Now, this is a 10 mark response, which is uh, adapted from a, a student exemplar. I've, I've kind of tweaked it a little bit and, and kind of put some other ideas in. But this is pretty much what a student wrote with some additions, amendments and tweaks um, to kind of help with what we are talking about. So we'll start off with the very first part of this essay which you can see is what are life events. So the very beginning of this essay defines what life events are. It brings in the theory of the Holmes race scale, and it talks about how over a lifetime we expect an uh, impact on different events that has different levels of stress. So it kind of just explains what major life events are and what the Holmes ray scale is. And again, a nice, easy introduction to the essay with an example. 
the real discussion of the question begins after this. So you can see the first thing we have is the negative impact that it, this event will have on a mirror. So huge impact on a mirror. Um, and again, it talks about how the job loss will affect his sense of purpose, his emotional development will lower, self-esteem and confidence will reduce. Having lost a job, his self-concept, he may feel like a failure. Amir may have to rely on benefits to support his family uh, because he's lost his job. He may not be able to afford healthier foods, which increase the low quality and fatty foods in their diet. This could cause weight gain, uh, high cholesterol, diabetes. You could even link that back to self-image that then that would have a negative physical self-image. His physical development could be affected due to the stress of losing his job, stress with money. And again, stress can cause physical conditions like high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. Socially, Amir may have less time to spend or see his friends and this could increase his feelings of isolation possibly leading to depression. So within this, we've done a couple of things. You see this big chunk of discussion about the negative impact. There's a few things in here that are really important to this question. So you can see links to health issues, weight gain, high cholesterol, diabetes, very specific health impacts. The reference to Amir all the way through the discussion. So again, it's really important to make sure that you're talking about the character, you're thinking about them as you write these 10 markers. In the second half of the essay, we've got the positive impacts of change. So however, having more time at home means Amir can spend more leisure time with his family, which can improve his emotional development. The attachment with his wife and children could be really beneficial. As attachments are stronger, he might be able to cope with the stress better. So we've kind of got a little bit of Balby being referenced. Unpredictable life events can also provide positive effects. So it can provide motivation to change and develop. Return to college can improve Amir's emotional development, which is self-esteem, self-concept. Um, he'll feel proud, his intellectual development will take place. Once he gains his job as an electrician, he can learn new skills. He'll be physically active. However, kind of balancing back this could make him more tired from stress from his job. So we've got a paragraph of negative impacts and a paragraph of positive impacts, so the balance of the two. Within this second paragraph, again, we've highlighted some theoretical links. Cognitive development is a bit of Piaget, Balby's kind of reference very briefly. But as I say, it's a very loose discussion of theory. Holmes Ray at the very beginning is our main theory discussion. But in the second paragraph, references to Amir, not as many impacts on health, but again, we had quite a few of those early on. So we've ticked that element off. Last but not least, we have a conclusion, a clear conclusion to our essay. Overall, unpredictable life events generally have negative impacts on individuals health and development due to stress and negative impacts on self-esteem and concept. However, they can be motivating and encourage people to make change, which can improve their physical, intellectual, social and emotional development. So in terms of our structure, clear introduction with a theory and the concept or the topic outlined. Negative impacts of the issue versus positive theory, character references, health conditions, all within this response. And again, based on here, this discussion, this answer would have received 10 out of 10. So as I say, it's developed from and based on a student response with some few tweaks and amendments here and there just to make it a little bit different from what the student originally wrote, but was graded as 10 out of 10. So I would assume and hope that my response here would be along the similar lines. So as I say, coming back to where we started at the beginning, the main thing with these essays, link to the topic, use your theories, Balance your arguments with pros and cons, refer to the characters, actual medical health issues and provide a clear conclusion. Give yourself a minute to plan this before you start an essay and you'll be on the right track to getting high marks on 10 out of 10s. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been of help and good luck with any essays you have coming up.